With this video, we're going to talk about something you've either never heard of before, but definitely want to know about, or you've heard about it, but you still don't really know what the heck it is. Because when you're in all these different appointments with your kiddo who maybe is struggling with motor milestones, so delayed crawling, delayed walking, sensory processing issues, speech delays, maybe it's big stuff, autism spectrum disorder, or those sort of challenges, you maybe have heard this term, proprioception, which is the perception of movement or our body's sixth sense. I as to where we are in space as we're moving through the world. And it's been said before, something you've definitely heard before, movement is life. And especially for the developing brain of a child, that is the development of life. So proprioception is a conversation that you're very familiar with if your child struggles with autism spectrum disorder, sensory processing disorder, or any sort of motor delays or kind of developmental milestones challenges. But it's also something we want you to be very familiar with if your child struggles with things like ADHD, sensory processing, or even anxiety and mental emotional well-being. Because this nerdy term with a lot, a lot of vowels and a lot of letters, proprioception, is absolutely at the root of our brain health, of the health of our nervous system. And for a child who still is figuring out, right, how to sit up, how to roll over, how to crawl, how to walk, how to talk, then they figure out how to communicate and how to emotionally and behaviorally regulate. These are all things that are crucial to our children's quality of life, not just when they're little, but especially setting the stage through these developmental milestones and these neuromotor milestones, especially for overall health in every way later on in life. So even at proprioception, this is the first time you're hearing it. I want you to watch this video all the way through because you're going to learn a ton about when it goes haywire, when proprioception is interfered with, altered and decreased, how much trouble it'll really wreak havoc on your child's quality of life, not just with their movement, which is what it really does, but how much these challenges with what's called proprioception or subluxation spill over into the brain and the nervous system and cause challenges there as well. So the first thing we want to talk about is just define proprioception. So proprioception is the perception of movement. That's really what it is. And so all throughout our body, there is these little sensors. So the best analogy I can always give parents, it's like if you have a motion sensor light on your garage or maybe on your front stoop. And when something walks by, I live out on a farm where there's a lot of um, raccoons and coyotes. There's just a lot of animals out here on the farm who are definitely walking by at all times. And so we don't have motion sensor lights because they would be on all the time because we literally have our own animals and then there's wild animals out here. Okay. So got into the farmer analogy there. But what happens when someone walks by a motion sensor, sense, sensitive sensor, say that five times real fast, is there's an electrical charge generated by the motion that is picked up by that technology, by that sensor in the garage light, and it creates electricity and it turns on the light. It's actually a perfect analogy for how God designed our bodies and specifically the developing muscles motor or better termed neuromotor system for our kiddos. We require movement stimulation. We require movement that is smooth and strong. So if your child's ever been diagnosed with not only the delays in crawling, talking, speech, those sort of things, but maybe they've been delayed with, or diagnosed with low tone, weak core, toe walking. These are all things where the solution to getting them through these struggles is through getting proprioception back online. So that's what the perception of movement is, or that's what proprioception is. It's our body's innate sense as to where we are in space as we move through it. And movement is so important to calm the brain. That's why when you're stressed out, you're on a long flight or you're stuck at your desk at work all day or stuck in traffic, what do you want to do? Move. So kiddos who are stuck with sensory emotions, anxiety, ADHD, autism, what are they doing all the time when they're sensory seeking? They're actually feeding their body proprioception. So if your kiddo loves big hugs and it calms them down, if they love to touch everything, climb on everything, crawl over everything, Thing. They're seeking out proprioception, which tells us, so that behavior or those mechanisms of sensory seeking, movement seeking, fidgeting, impulsive, biting, chewing, toe walking, I could go on the list of sensory seeking behaviors, it tells us they're lacking proprioception. They're not getting enough proprioceptive movement-based stimulation into their brain and nervous system on their own, so they have to seek out extra. Now, what would be the trigger of that? What would be the root, root cause of that? Well, it goes all the way back to stress during pregnancy, forceps, vacuum, C-section, induction deliveries that create tons of physical trauma and injury 
around the brainstem. So this area up here is the most proprioceptive sensitive. So a lot of big words in this one. It is the most neurosensory sensitive area of the entire nervous system. All of these muscles as to the, that, that hold up our head and hold up our brainstem and our cervical spine or neck, there is more, there is a much higher density of these proprioceptive or mechanoreceptive sensors inside the muscles around your child's neck, ears, and traps. That is why if we take a big pliers, take a big set of hands, take a big plunger, and we yank, twist, pull kids into the world through birth interventions, it's physically traumatic. And so the number one trigger of proprioceptive sensory processing and all these challenges that come with it that we see is actually physical birth interventions or what we term birth trauma. And it messes with the feedback into the system. And then this cerebellum and brainstem area, vagus nerve, these are all the areas that then process and integrate this movement-based stimulation. So when we have physical trauma here, we have tons of issues with this one thing we're talking about right here. And this one thing creates tons of other issues from there. This area is also very sensitive to toxins. And the list goes on as to how that stress sits there. So what all of that that ends up causing, I'm gonna jump over to the iPad for a second. It creates something, another, we're, we're giving you two new words of this video. It creates something called subluxation. Now subluxation is a fancy chiropractic word for de decreased proprioception. But there's a pathway, there's a mechanism by with which that happens. So what happens first is there's misalignment, okay? Now, we often think, ah, chiropractic, oh, that's for adults who hurt their spine. Well, the spine's job is to protect and house the central and autonomic nervous system, and it contributes 60 to 80% of the proprioceptive input into the brain. So if movement is life, movement of your neck and your spine is the most life-improving or life-altering injury, trauma, you could suffer because the first thing that happens and the second thing that happens is once you have misalignment, you have decreased range of motion or fixation, okay? So when those joints of the neck, the brainstem, the cranial system get subluxated, our term, these two things are kind of the biomechanical physical elements and these two things, because this is just how the system works, once they are in play, that's the third thing. They decrease movement. So the decreased movement decreases proprioceptive input into the brainstem, into the nervous system. And when there is decreased proprioception into the nervous system, all of this adds up to an increase in sympathetic fight or flight reaction. Again, the best analogy I can always give parents as we wrap this one up about how important movement is and therefore how detrimental even a mild to moderate birth trauma or subluxation can be for a child and how overlooked and how crucial it is to motor milestones, sensory processing, speech delays, mental, emotional, ADHD, all of it can be triggered by that birth trauma physical trauma, physical injury, subluxation, decreased proprioception, and all of this that we're mapping out on this video. And if you click the link either in the copy of this video or in the link in our bio, you'll find a whole article about proprioception and then the link between proprioception and what we call the perfect storm, which is this neurological sequence that happens all the way back, pregnancy, labor, and delivery, and alters the development and function of our kids' nervous systems and brains and sends them down the pathway of autism, ADHD, anxiety, sensory, and other challenges that are all rooted in proprioception. But the number one thing that sits there is just that nonstop sympathetic dominance. And the best analogy is you sitting at your desk all day not being able to move with tons of input coming at you. When you get done sitting for eight hours at your desk, in traffic, on a plane, wherever it may be, how's your mood? How's your energy? How's your focus? So lack of movement, lack of proprioception is ridiculous ridiculously neurophysiologically correlated to focus issues, emotional dysregulation issues, and as we've said throughout this whole video, the list goes on. So if you know that your child had maybe breech positioning, had some birth intervention, had tortica, I should have mentioned that on the iPad, torticollis and plagiocephaly are absolute surefire bets that your child's going to struggle with proprioception, sensory, and neuromotor function and tone and coordination later on in life. So physical therapy, OT, PT, they will get to the secondary, awesomely, they're amazing, they get to the secondary elements of this, but the single biggest missing link 
to help your child is to find out if they are in fact subluxated. And to do that, I want you to take two steps from this video. Number one, click the link, learn more about proprioception, learn more about subluxation, learn more about how we can actually run neurosensory proprioceptive movement-based exams to find out if these deficits and these altered tone weak core, what's really causing these delays and causing these challenges. And then the second thing, once you're ready, once you've learned more and it all makes sense and you're all ready and you're excited to get some answers, get some drug-free solutions and get chiropractic into your kiddo's life, then I want to make sure you get to the right kind of chiropractor because this is not your regular average Joe chiropractic. Taking this neurotonal, this neurologically focused approach to chiropractic is always been at the root of chiropractic, but it's not what every chiropractor does, particularly through their training and their experience for kids with neurosensory proprioceptive challenges. So once you're on our website and you get all the information, be sure to click over to the directory and plug in your zip code, plug in your city and state and find one of our trained pediatric docs local to you. Our PX Docs Network is absolute experts on this. And if your child has already been in speech therapy, been in OT, been in PT, and they're making some progress, but not big enough, not fast enough, or they're plateaued and not making progress at all, then those adjustments in chiropractic is absolutely the missing link, but you got to get the right kind. And that's what the website. That's what the directory will do for you. If you found this video helpful, please like it, please share it, please comment below. If you have any questions for us, you want to reach out to us directly through our platform, just send us a DM. We love talking about this nerdy stuff. We love talking about this neurology. We are here for you always with hope, answers, and drug-free help. Hope this helped. Please share. See you on the next one.